<laughs> so, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Sabrina. I am the head of uh, PR and marketing department. Uh, so today we have the lovely Nadia here, uh, who and we will be talking about uh, zero waste pet care. So, um, yeah, Nadia, would you like to introduce yourself yes. or like do like hi. a brief? Okay, okay. Let me into fix my hair and introduce myself. Um, hi everybody. I am Nadia. Um, Nadia Nash on Instagram on social media. I, uh, we are here to talk about pet care. So I guess I am here because I have a lot of pets. <laughs> uh, I have both cats and dogs. I have. Uh, I hope you guys are ready for this. Uh, seventeen pets, seventeen cats in my house that I take care of. And I have uh, two dogs that I take care of as well. So that's a total of a few, a few, just a few pets. And, that's a lot. <laughs> and um, of course, since we're on this whole zero waste thing, uh, of course, I have to make a disclaimer. I am not fully 100% zero waste. Um, but of course, I aim uh, to reduce the waste that I use and you know put out into the landfills whatever when it comes to myself and also these little animals that I take care of but yeah no worries it's definitely about little things that we can do to make the world a better place so um, definitely one step at a time uh, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us today uh, we have Hi, 11 everyone. viewers on Instagram just now, someone said hi as well on Facebook. Hi. Hi. Hi, Eleanor. Hi, Eleanor. hi Na Yeah. Hi. Okay. If you guys are on the Facebook stream. The Instagram one, I fortunately cannot see. You guys can see my little cat on that little. Let's see. So, I have 17, but I only brought two into this room. I cannot fit too many. And another one is just oh, roaming around somewhere. You guys want to see pictures of my dogs? <laughs> yes. Can we? <laughs> Because Do you outside, have any on hand? Uh, yeah, so I told myself, okay, I'm going to take some photos so that I can share it with you guys on my iPad. Uh, so this is taken this morning. So I've got two dogs. Uh, that So these are strays that I rescued. So they're not allowed in the house. Um, They are in my yard. That's why I live landed and that's why I rent a corner lot. Can you guys see? So that's boy. He's a little boy. <laughs> Black. A little black boy okay. and then um, okay that's boy and mama is at the top i call her mama so she's a sweet little old lady so okay a picture of mama so boy and mama those are my dogs <laughs> not, very names, uh, not very creative names <laughs> not very creative names but because um well there's a story uh because i uh, um so a lady actually an auntie actually feeds them outside of my house but uh, after a while i told like i told the auntie like oh yeah why not let them in my yard and so that you know because it's better to take care of them like that they can bathe them whatever and they eventually kind of became attached to me and that's how they kind of became mine but yeah so i love black dogs too and black cats yes <laughs> you have such a heart of gold like my parents because i still live with my parents so they're mm -hmm. like very anti-pet so i have no pet but <laughs> i want it I, I, I've wanted like a pet since I was a child. So but now like growing up, like having my own place like that I that I return to, sometimes it feels like, oh, how am I gonna do this if it's going to cost so much waste and also be so expensive, right? So um I think uh aside from uh mama and boy, uh the two cats you have in here, uh it, what what it, Maybe you wanna do a I'll quick. show. Okay, so the one that's sleeping here. Okay, this one is Stewie. He's my latest rescue actually. Picked him up from uh Rasta, if you guys know, near Kampung Pajichala there. And this one is one of my oldest cats, Malam. Hi So his name is Malam because when he was born, he's like very good you know. So dark <laughs> as night. Seperti Malam. Bila Malam. Malam. Okay. So Malam. One of my oldest cats. Uh, why? Well, he, but he's not old. He's like I had him for like maybe six years now. So this is my love. He's quite a. I call him Dong so Dong. He's got a very Dong Dong face. He like. Ooh. <laughs> that's my love. Okay. Uh, uh, so that's just two out of the many. Uh, and I have like a new litter of kittens that were just 
that that was oh my gosh. born in March. Because uh, the mama, I saw rescue a pre- usually I rescue like pregnant mummies or like sick cats or whatever. So that's how the litter. So now I have like five little kittens just jumping around the house. So can you imagine the mess that they make? <laughs> Fun. <laughs> so like, um, so how does how does it feel about mornings? Kamini asks. Um, how does the cat feel, or how does <laughs> How do we feel about mornings with cats? I, I'm so confused. If, if you're asking how Malam feels about mornings, nah, he's not a morning person. He's more of a Malam person. <laughs> Just like Malam me. is a Malam person. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Malam, Malam used to have like skin problems and okay. he used to lick himself. So at one time, Malam, which was a black cat, suddenly turned like a grey. So you say, oh, Malam that turned into siang. Malam turned into day. You know what I mean? So to answer your question. <laughs> There's another cat at the back near the lab. Introduce him. Okay, okay, I'll... I don't think he wants to be bothered, but for you, I'll pick him up. Hi, Sid, okay, by so the way. This is Stewie. He's a very naughty boy. Um, I have yet to vaccinate and you and spay him because of MCO. We just rescued him. And yeah, that is a... Um, get, get that, get that, get that. What is he trying to do? Okay, he's going to jump. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Paco! Yeah, part four, oh, little cat. So cute. Okay. Yeah, so um, you have so many pets, so yeah. many cats. Um, by the way, uh, Lydia, just to answer your question, we'll be covering um zero waste pet care, which brings us to the topic. So how do you feed so many animals while um yeah. trying to reduce waste? Yes, exactly. Okay, so um. Like I said, I have, okay, just, I have more than, you know, two cats. I've got 17. So can you imagine the amount of cat food I have to buy? Um, so I buy a lot of cat food every month. Uh, I think it's about 18 to 20 kg. So for me, on a monthly basis, I still buy uh, dry kibbles. I still go to a pet shop and buy like, but I buy a huge bag. And that okay. bag at the end of the day is so big. Uh, and because I'm not fully zero waste, I can still use it as, you know, the liner for my veins. I use it to like bounce some part. It's oh, okay. perfect for me. The frequency is perfect for me. But for those of you guys who I think have like one or two cats or whatever, uh, I think Newt has a bulk pet, pet food, uh, dry oh, okay. tables for you to buy. Um, however, the only downside to that is sometimes like out of stock. Then once it's out of stock, you like, or you will panic where to buy. So mm-hmm. for me, I think it's the best way is to buy bulk, buy as in, buy a large amount it's okay i think even if you have one cat just buy a full like 10 20 kg if you can share it with friends or you seal it up you know then the next month you book out the next right. one you know i'm the way to do it um that's pet food for the cats but for my dogs um my mama bought mama mama the lady dog um she's sensitive so she's got like very masala to makan so after trying all the dry kibbles, uh, it's like very hard. But for me, I make food at home for her. So it's oh, okay. pet food. Yeah, I think if you have like less than five pets at home, that is actually the best way to go for you to like reduce waste. Make your own pet food, man. It's there are so many recipes out there. And if you're still worried, if you're you know you've got sensitive uh stomach near cats or dogs. Just approach a vet, approach a pet nutritionist, maybe with a fee, you know, but get them to come up with like a nice uh, recipe for your pets and then you can make it at home yourself. So I think that's the way to go. Because if you, I'm sure if you practice zero waste, you can go pasta and buy, you know how to get mm-hmm. a raw uh, food, you know, produce yeah. without plastic, kan? So, and mm-hmm. balik rumah, you masak lah. I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. So uh, to answer Zarina's question on Instagram. Oh, my mom, uh, okay, mommy, yeah. what are you doing here? Mommy, what are you oh. doing here? Hi, mom. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, mom. I think she's here because she wants me to wish her. Happy, Happy Mother's Day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi, auntie. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah. where can you get wet dog food? Yeah. So I think that's why so, to, to, to answer that question, make it yourself make, at home. Yeah. Yeah. But also, um, I if I'm not mistaken, I... I've been on some like zero waste punya um, chat chat forums or whatever kind. Apparently, there's this company that's selling it also. It's called, wait, Cup Grub. Cup Grub? Yeah, oh, okay. Right? Yeah, and they sell, but I think only cat food lah. They sell cat food in glass jars. 
So oh, wow. you can return it yeah, for a one ringgit like refund at the end of the day. And there are a lot of other um well wet food like or raw food like pet food providers. The only downside to that is why I, I haven't used them is you know they come in plastic packaging, they come in like you know the plastic Tupperware, and I don't think they have a program to like return it and stuff like that. That's why I ended up making my own food. But yeah, somebody saying here um on Instagram, Cup Grub is Cup Grub business. Yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. And they recycle the jars. Yeah. But I don't think they do dog food as in the amount is so so little. It's only for cats. But hopefully if they start to do dog food. I am actually thinking of uh, starting a business uh, maybe sometime in the future to do something like this to provide wet uh, dog and cat food but in a way that people can have a program to like return their jars and you can recycle your jars or maybe even maybe even bring your own Tupperware and I'll just fill it for you I'm you know but hopefully I can come up with something like that or even any one of you guys you know if you guys can come up with a system and a program that'd be great for our pets yeah I think that that'd be a really great idea so like maybe we you guys can like you in the future you can like partner up with like places for example like CD or Nude or you know like these uh, sundry shops that actually sell yeah. zero waste stuff and you yeah. can market that way but yeah, yeah. so, so that's Basically, to wrap up the question of how do you feed your many, many pets is to either uh, buy in bulk or make your own pet food. Yes, yes. Yeah, so um, next question is, uh, okay, I think we have a question from Eleanor. I have cats. One of my cats is very fussy and refuses to eat kibbles that's been open for too long. He's 14 years old now. How do you advise oh, on how to deal with spoiled old cat? Yeah, 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 but it's old. So... Sometimes uh, you, you might want to check with the vet, but, but you know, okay, of course, whatever we say here today is not certified by any vet or pet nutritionist, mm -hmm. you have to say that. Um, but I have this same problem with my dog. Uh, so besides mama, the boy is very mengada. He don't want to eat kibbles. What I have been doing is I make stock, sometimes even vegetable stock, um, lamb, chicken stock. I keep it in like a jar, whatever. So I pour it on top of the dry kibbles and he seems to enjoy it that way sometimes oh, okay. even just putting water just try water like warm water first maybe your cat might want to eat it if the one then move to stock if the one then maybe he she just wants wet food lah. but or mix it mix both wet food and dry food and yeah um and also i have this tip my mom can attest to this she has done this to her cats if the dry kibbles have been out for too long and you know like low form uh, like masuk angin kan uh -huh. you she would bake them in the oven again so just put oh, on okay. a tray, yeah, bake them again. So sometimes the cat just wants that crunch and that might work. So there are a few alternatives you can try here and hopefully one of it might work for you. So yeah. Would it work if uh, when you open the cat food, you put it in a Tupperware that's uh, airtight? So that would that would that help? Yeah, yeah. My, okay, like I said, so I have like, imagine the bags that I buy, it's huge, right? Mm -hmm. So I would straight away... Um, Transfer half of it into a tub, into a like a very big tub, like how what, four liter uh, tub, what, whatever. The other one, I'll just like tie it up and you know put those pins or clips or whatever at the top. Yeah, it's like the, the airtight. Air yes, the one in the airtight tub, the whichever you think is the more airtight one. So you save that for later, and the one that is like a bit more open one, <laughs> you know, then that one you start feeding them. So you know you create a system for yourself, and mm -hmm. it sh shouldn't be a problem. Great. So, um, moving on, uh, oh, we have a question from Lydia. As a pet sitter, I have to comply to each pet's needs. So, there's lower control on purchases for these pets, collecting more plastic waste and pee pads to throw. Curious to know how other pets, pet sitters handle this. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm so sorry, Lydia. I mean, I can't help you here because I'm no pet sitter and I totally understand uh, people who have to deal with many pets at one time and not even your own pets so they have like different different requirements i'm sure um pet sitters pet hotels you know like even uh vets whatever have to go through this and i think it's quite hard to reduce uh, uh the waste that you collect i don't know about pee pads though hmm, collecting more yeah is I'm it sorry, recyclable is it recyclable uh, I, I, I i i have no idea uh, no. I don't think so. I think they're for sure made out of plastic and I don't think there are alternatives yet or at least not in Malaysia. So yeah, my, thank God my dogs, uh, they 
do their number one, number two outside. So I do, I've never had to buy pee pads. Uh, so thank God for that. Yeah. I wonder if you can train your uh, pets to go in the bathroom instead so you can just, is, is it? Right. Like, I, I, I'm sorry, I have no idea how, like, can you flush? Yeah. Who? Um, like, okay. Okay, if we're getting into the whole pet litter, pet waste disposal, okay, let me. <laughs> okay, so there are, of yeah. course, a lot of opinions on this. Uh, let's talk about cats first, okay? So cats are mostly indoors. Whatever they do outside, we don't have control over. So the ones that are indoors, um, I have read a lot of articles saying that it is actually not good to flush uh, cat waste into the, you know, water system, the sewage system, mm -hmm. because of a certain kind of, pathogen, bacteria, virus, I don't know lah, huh, but a bad thing lah. That's something that our water treatment can't treat. However, these articles are from the US. So I don't know if it applies to Malaysia. Okay, but let's be, uh, if I were to be reasonable and logic here, the way I see it, I am the type ah. Tissue also, I don't flush into the toilet one because my mother was. Oh, okay. But, you know, things like that. So, I don't flush my, my pet waste into the toilet because of that reason. Because of fear of uh, blockage lah. But, mm. I would think that uh, it should be okay if you only have like one cat. Like you said lah, train the cat, you know, to pee or poop in the toilet. I If you can do that, by all means, I think. But, um, there are also cat litters out there. So, let's talk about cat litter here, right? There are uh, a quite a good alternative of cat litters that are biodegradable, compostable, and some even claim to be flushable. Uh, so if you are one of those people that are okay with flushing waste down the toilet, the ones that are made out of, I think uh, I'm going to throw in the brand's name here. I just bought it to try it also. It's called pottycats.com. So they okay. make a litter out of soybean. So it's fully oh. plant-based. Yes, and if uh if you take the litter right, you just put in like a glass of water, it just dissolves. Oh so, wow! Yes, that is for me convincing enough that you can flush it down the toilet. Uh, if you don't consider the whole like pathogen scare or whatever lah kan. But so if you have one or two cats, um, why not give that a try and see if that fits your lifestyle? But as you can tell, I have many cats, but I only have two litter boxes. I only have two litter boxes, and I've tried an array of pet litters. The ones that stick to me for now is uh, best, cat's best. Uh, it is made out of uh, like saw dust or like uh, wood pulp or something like that. Uh, I should have taken a photo. But um, yeah, cat's best. It's uh, imported, unfortunately, but it comes in uh, a paper bag. So the paper bag is compostable and the, the litter itself is compostable. There is also another option that is locally made. It's called Green Cat. Oh my god, did I get it? Where is my notebook? Green Cat, I think. Wait, uh, let me just Google it since I'm at my computer. Green Cat sure, is the sure. best thing. The best thing is because it's made, yes, Green Cat, like Green okay. K A T. If you're a pet owner, you should know you should have seen it at the store. It's locally made. Uh, it's made out of 100 percent recycled paper. So that's wow. what I love about it too. And it comes in a fully paper bag. So these are my top two options. So I kind of mix the two litters, the cat's best and green cat. So the paper one and the wood pulp one. Um, and I have no issue with that. So, but what do I do with that litter then? A lot of people will ask. Uh, I have been very lucky because um, I always only stay at a landed house because of this okay. reason also. So I compost my poop. I don't oh. mix it with the food waste. I have like a purely poop compost, if that makes sense. So it's so purely, it's only so for I, poop. Yes. And I don't use it for any other purpose, but to sometimes I, I do like use it for my plants outside. I do have a lot of plants, but if not, um, there's this also, there's this thing called the poop dissolver. So it's instead of a composter, it's a dissolver. If any of you guys have heard of this. So composter gives you compost. Dissolver just kind of lets the ground and the micro, you know, organism eats up the poop. So you don't have to do anything, just dump the poop in there, but maybe, you know, just have a look at it, put in some uh, dry leaves and whatever to keep the smell sometimes, but it'll dissolve it. So those of you who are interested, just go Google it. A bunch of articles are out there, poop compost and poop dissolver. So if you guys don't need compost, try poop dissolver. Okay. 
do we want to get into how I do it maybe like yeah uh, I think Lydia is asking more details on requesting for more details on food comfort okay, okay so uh, I'll tell you guys how I do it um, it of course differs for a lot of people this is how it has been working for me so in the yard I call it a lobang <laughs> Uh, the loba will depend on the size of the bin that you are using. So for me, I just use a plastic basket. You know those plastic basket with holes, uh, like laundry basket, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I put. Sorry, yeah, I got my cat trying to get out of the room. Can I go and help <laughs> him out first? Ah? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Malam, malam. Hi, Mama. Nana, Abu. Hi, baby. Abu. Well, I think he's a bit. Um, what do you call that? He doesn't like to be stuck in a room with me. And this room is quite small. Okay, sorry guys. So uh, back to my food composting. So a waste, uh, a laundry basket, you know, the ones with holes. I dig a hole that's as big, just enough size for the basket. I put it in, leaving some space at the top, probably about an inch at the top for air. And then, okay. I, I, then you find a cover that can cover it up at the top. Okay. okay? So that, yeah, rain or whatever, water doesn't get in. And that's all I do actually for me oh, okay. um, so to start off the composting if you want to do composting uh, you start off with um, if you have a pile of compost already you use that because you need to I, I, I'm not using the proper as a starter as a starter or mm -hmm. I know a lot of people sometimes can buy it right those like liquid or whatever but the way mm -hmm. I see it is because I'm not using it I'm not too meticulous about my composting because I'm not going to use it for something else I, I just need it for a way to dispose of my pet waste uh, mm -hmm. rather than you know throwing it out so I just dump my pet waste in there because it's already got the waste paper it's already from the litter you know it's already got mm -hmm. the wood pulp so sometimes I put a bit of soil if the smell gets a bit too much but I usually have no problem with it because it's out in the yard even when I imagine uh, even when I open the lid of the composter it's not like a whiff of smell comes out no it smells maybe just a hint of like you know, cat pee because it hasn't properly like uh, mm -hmm. processed yet. But other than that, I don't have a problem. I put both my dog and cat poop in there and so far I have no problem with it. But if you want to get meticulous, you can as in you want to get like proper with it, just Google it and there are proper ways to do it. But that's how very easily I do it. Like, I hope that helps you guys to give an idea. Um, it sounds pretty, um, it sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah. 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 Because the way I see it, right. Um, even because now this whole like zero waste movement is such a thing now. My parents, how they have been doing it, like, you know, back in the 80s, 90s, um, they also, they just core it lobang, tanam the cat poop in there, yeah. and they cover it up, right? Um, so they dig, like what my parents used to do, like, they dig a deep enough hole so that you don't have to dig a new hole every day. You dig a deep mm -hmm. enough hole put the poop inside and then you just cover it with a bit of soil, just a bit. Mm -hmm. And then you put more tambah, 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 tambah. And then you just kind of maybe like rotate holes, if that makes sense. And I think that's how it should be because pet waste, this, you know, uh, should go back into the earth to give back nutrients to the earth and it shouldn't be a problem. That's how we should do it. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. So thank you for sharing. Um, I think aside from their food, their waste. Um, what about items like their toys? Like, do you have yeah. like, do you buy a lot of toys for your pets? Um, yeah, that's. I think that's the one thing that I find most difficult. Um, is in terms of I was sometimes want to buy new toys and it comes so heavily packaged. So one thing's for sure is don't buy it online because you know if you buy it online, it'll come in layers and layers of plastic or whatever so the 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 best the the most minimal <laughs> minimal that you can do is go to a pet store at least if you see it, you know sometimes it's not wrapped in full package uh, in full plastic sometimes it's just you know there's like a board like a paper behind it and then it's attached like that so that's very mm -hmm. minimal and uh buy like you know uh, for dogs their dog shoes and all usually it's made out of like uh, rubber and silicone so if it lasts long, then I think it's okay as long as it's not single use kind. So, um, don't buy uh, for cats, for instance. I've learned my lesson. Don't buy, you know, the ching ching ching. What do you call that? Uh? The one with the stick and then the feather at the end. I know oh, it's okay. Love that you know, the one with the bell or whatever. My cats love that. But for me, if I buy that, it's like one week, then it's gone, and then you're just left with scraps of plastic 
you know, that you don't know what to do with. So make your own. <laughs> I will do you use like a rope and tie some feathers yes, at the end? And, uh, <laughs> exactly. I will find like um, some kayu outside or whatever. And then uh, if I have like recycle a, a reusable raffia spring, if not just yarn or whatever. And then just make your own. Try just be creative with it. Sometimes just balls of, you know, like, babe, oh my gosh, my cats love this. You take like surat kamba, you know, like you make pom-poms with, you can make pom-poms uh -huh. with uh, yarn, right? They love like surat kamba pom-poms. Yeah, but I know it will last like one day. But then you just make new ones lah or, you know, I make a lot of uh, cardboard forts for my cats. Uh, especially now doing MCO, sometimes I, I still uh, order things online, like order groceries online, and they come in cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been making castles and forts, and <laughs> maybe I should share on Instagram later. I show you guys. Like, yeah, yeah, we would love it. to see it. <laughs> yeah, so I I think, yeah, the, the advice is exactly that. Be creative, because um, cats, I know they need uh stimuli they still need to play uh, they can play with you um with dogs is just bring them out for walks run around with them uh, so so it will reduce the number of pet uh, toys that you buy but even but i know they need it and i buy it myself buy good quality ones so buy ones that will last you know a true toy that will last long if if not put what i've been doing with my dogs uh, they like to play tug tug of, tug of war tug and oh, okay. whatever, tug and pull whatever um old clothes i would just tie them up in knots or uh tea towels that you know is like really raba already i tie them up in knots tie them up together and i'll just play tug of war with them like that and you tie like something heavy at the end then it can become a fetch toy uh so that's how i have been doing it it doesn't look nice you want to take photo very ugly lah but it works for the dogs, the dogs yeah the dogs. If, if it works yeah if it works it works yeah. so like yeah, what about like like uh, what about like scratching posts and all that? Oh. Like, uh, okay, so uh, for cats, right? Um, well, if you're not particular, you can always buy like you know the ones that are made of cardboard, so they're fully. Uh, oh, somebody wake up! You see, somebody stretching their terkejut. I. So um, you can buy cardboard punya scratch posts, but um, you can make your own by buying uh so my dad okay actually i'm very lucky because my dad is very handy so he's made me like cat houses and all that yeah so he makes like a like a stand and he wraps the jute rope around it and that's oh. what i use for scratch posts um but this came out of coincidence so i just moved into this house like a few months ago okay tell you guys my story i just moved into this house a few months ago we had a carpet that was like a tiny rug that was rolled up that I have yet to display. So I just left it at the corner of the house. You know, when you roll up carpet, the end, the back end of it is very like kasa kasa one. It's a bit somehow, scratchy, yeah. Yes. Somehow the cats have been using that as a scratching post. It's not, you know, vertical, it's horizontal, but it's long enough. They'll stand on one end and everybody just goes and scratch there. So that's another idea. If you have old rugs and carpets that you do not know what to do with, roll it up and put it in a corner for your cat to scratch and if it gets too old after one time you know like you know then you switch the rolling to the other end then they will start scratching balik you know what i mean so that's how i use it uh, that's how i do it uh we have a comment here we use boxes for my purchase and make them into new scratcher for my cat yeah because cats will scratch on anything okay <laughs> Boxes, carpets rugs a uh, piece of wood you know so you see what they like and just leave it there for them to scratch. I think that works as well. Yeah. Cool. And when you're done with the rug as a scratching pose for the cat, you can cut it up and then put it in the in the knots and play tug of war with your with your with exactly. your dog. Exactly. <laughs> yes. That's one thing I really uh, um, appreciate about having my cats and dogs. I have found so many more ways to reuse and repurpose old things. Because um, sometimes, like, as human beings, you want to reuse certain things. When people look at it, they might judge you or they might feel a bit iffy about using it, okay? But when it comes to pets, you know, animals, they don't judge the aesthetics, right? So when yeah, they don't care. It, exactly. If you make sure it's clean enough that it's not, you know, ridden with bacteria, you make sure it's clean enough, they'll use it. So I have so many things that I repurpose just for my cats and dogs, you know, that have found new life because of them. So that's why you should get a pet. 
Oh my gosh, that's so cool yeah. though. But uh, aside from um, puppy pad uh, scratching posts, uh, we have another question. What about like collars and uh, fish oh. that you put on your dogs and cats? Uh, yeah, the only advice I can give to that is buy a, just like the toys, buy a good quality one so that it, it lasts long. Like the leash that I've been using for my dogs, I've been using since day one. Um, uh, if you're a dog owner, you should know this. Like, you go to the Kedai, you will see one that's like 12 ringgit and one that's like 90 ringgit. The, oh, the one wait, that's wow. 90 ringgit will be really good. It will last a lot. Because usually they're thicker, made out of, you know, better quality products and use that. I know some people use like the metal chains. I don't like to use that because it's noisy and it looks a bit scary for my dogs. Um, uh, I don't. I don't know yet if in Malaysia, whether it's easily accessible, whether they, they are the ones that, um, what, like biodegradable, you know, maybe like bioplastic kind of material. I'm sure in the States they have that. So if you're interested, maybe you can Google Amazon and buy it, but still it defeats the purpose because they're going to ship it over here for you. So buy a good quality one. I think that's the easiest way. Um, I don't know if you can get secondhand ones. Um, so I haven't looked into this, but... This is a suggestion that maybe I would try next time also. Maybe uh, there are some, you know, yang macam, oh, I have an unused leash. Uh, if you have a good community of like, yeah. uh, because we have a pet sitter here, right? Or, you know, maybe you have a community of pet owners that will say like, hey, I have one that's unused. Maybe you can just share it around and, you know, buy it off secondhand. That would be a good idea as well. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people actually do um, like, uh, bartering and all that on the mm. um, Bully Nothing group. So oh, I think okay. there's like, yeah, there's spe oh, like a uh, specific, oh, okay. well, I'm not entirely sure because they give away like literally everything ranging yeah. from um, electronics to like clothes, to all sorts of things. So I guess maybe you can uh, give it a go. Ask if everyone has a spare uh, leash that they're not using anymore okay. or a collar. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, and um, so we've covered um, treats, we've covered toys, uh, we've covered their care care items. Um, oh yeah, one thing, shampoo. So like, where oh. do you get like your pet shampoo and all that? Uh, okay, personally, I go to BYOB Damansara Kim. So they have, um, you know, you bring your own bottles and you refill the pet shampoo there. The ones that they have is from the brand OMG. So it's natural. Uh, it's fragrance free and not to say my dogs love it lah. it's more like I love it for my dogs <laughs> because uh, there's okay. no scent or whatever so I kind of like it like that and it's colorless um it's mm, maybe a bit more expensive than the other options you find at normal pet store mm -hmm. lah, of course but uh, it, it's it's worth it you bring your own bottle and I usually get like a whole liter of it but if not also right uh, I think Nude, The Hive and all that uh, have options for pet shampoo as well and there are like bars soaps oh. and shampoos for for dogs and cats so you guys can try that but so far for me the one that's been working is the byob shampoo because it's um it leaves my dog's skin like uh, quite soft as well because i think i've had uh people telling me that some shampoo leave it like very kasa you know like how you use uh natural soap for your hair and it gets kasa, mm -hmm. you have to use like an mm -hmm. ACV rinse. Uh, I think it's the same for pets. But the one that I buy at BYOB, the OMG one, has been great so far. So you guys can try that out. Um, I don't know about other brands, but there are actually quite a good alternative, quite a good options for us if you guys go to the box stores and look for it there. So. Cool. Uh, yeah. uh, sweet. Uh, uh, SW. Uh, Curious to know when and why did you first start to raise pet care? What inspired you? Uh, okay, so actually this whole, uh, for me, the zero waste journey was kind of uh, sparked by my cats and dogs, actually, because uh, I live in a household of just me and my husband. So the waste that we produce isn't like, you know, it, it's not, not so a lot. Much, it scares you. Yeah, exactly. But... When it comes to 17 cats, you imagine back then when I was using, back then like maybe uh, five, six years ago when I had no clue of what zero waste is, the amount of pet waste and pet litter that I threw out, because I was using, you know, those like uh, clay, uh, the very passe-passe looking kind of cat litter. Okay. And every day, I would scoop out pet waste in bags, okay? 
So imagine the plastic bag I throw out, but I also imagine that pet litter that goes into the landfill and oh my god, it kind of scared me, you know what I mean? And I was like, I can't believe I'm contributing this much to the landfill and it hurt me so much, it did. So that's when I thought like, there must be a way, there must be a way. So before this whole zero waste movement was hot, uh, what my dad did for me was just, okay, we're gonna, that's why I said lah, we're gonna correct a lobang outside, we're just gonna go. That, that's what I did for a while. Until, you know, um, these other pet litters, these alternative compostable, biodegradable pet litter came. And I was like, oh, good, thank God. But still, um, you know, I had a problem with throwing it out to the tong sampah. So I think that's why also I, it's, when you ask me and husband, whenever we need to find our markers, we're renting, right? Oh my God, it's burning kepala to find a, you know, landed house with, you know, enough space outside. That is usually our top priority when we're looking for a place to stay. Um, because, you know, we're not like super rich or whatever. So budget is one. So it's always like priority is like, can we find a cheap enough house that has a landed area, you know, and not landed like concrete, but landed with pasir, you know what I mean? So uh, I guess it's priorities lah. So for me, that was my priority, my pets and myself and the waste that we are producing that's why we took this route so yeah that that's that's why i think that's why i think I like think. i think like um like building on to what you're saying um if you don't have a plot of land where you have passe we don't have stand mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. i wonder if it will work if you can just bring like a huge thong or a planter and yeah. that way you can uh plant even on concrete surfaces at least like you can plant them your 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 waste your your pet um, space there well okay do you uh, think sorry, that would yeah, work we should, yeah should, we should have gotten into this so for people who are living in a non-landed area uh, poop composting is actually a very real and <laughs> normal thing so you can either buy a proper you know poop composter online uh, it's available on amazon shopee i think whatever you can try that out or like how people do composting for their food waste uh, at home is the same with poop composters. So I don't, uh, I don't think it's advisable to mix them both. I don't know. For me, it feels a bit weird. But if you can compost your food, if you're already a food, co food waste composter, maybe start composting your pet waste as well. And both cat and dog waste, it's the same thing. So it's yes, it's actually doable. So just like how people do food waste composting at your balconies, mm -hmm. you know, in your kitchen or backyard or whatever, even if you don't have a big amount of land, you can do it for poop as well. So, and I can imagine for people who don't have 17 cats, the poop, that, the waste that your pet actually produces is it's not less. Much. It's actually, yeah. yeah, it's less. And also, I know people are worried about pathogens, uh, all these things, da, 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 da. if your cats are indoor cats and it's your cats, right? So you vaccinate them regularly, and you know what you are feeding your cats. Like, you know, whatever they eat is controlled by you. So you shouldn't be worried about, uh, not, not say 100% not worried, lah, but it should be more comforting to know that your pet's waste shouldn't co like have all these pathogens and whatnot. You know what I mean? So it shouldn't be a problem. Proper vaccination uh, schedule and they, um, on time vaccination, your cat should be free of all these things. So yeah, if your cat is healthy, but I guess don't worry. Yeah, but I guess also like if you're going to compost your pet waste, um, it's fine, but just don't use that compost to plant vegetables. I guess that's a good thing. So like yeah, if you can use it to plant like flowers, flowers and other like plants that yes. are not for consuming, I think that's fine, but definitely not like vegetables that you're going to be eating back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I I've, I I think I've read a comment before. You know, people were ask was asking, "Oh, my compost bin so full already. I don't know what to do with it compost." But like the way I see, it, I'm like, I can't believe that's a question because compost is just in a sense a soil or medium for plants. So if you're really mm -hmm. like too much already, uh, you bring it outside, find a nice plot of, you know, community garden or you know, like you just sidewalk, just put it out mm -hmm. there, and it's fine. It's just soil, and it's good soil anyway. So. Don't think about how do you dispose of your compost. That's, I, I feel like, uh, oh, what, what kind of question is that? <laughs> just put it out, it's fine. It's just soil. So, yeah. That was actually one of my main concerns. So, thank oh, you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's just soil. Yeah. Right? Or if you want, you call me and I'll put it on my plants. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. I think like, we have a few questions. That, yeah. yeah. Is there any tips to 
make homemade food for your pets. Okay. Do you have any um, recipes that you would like to share? Okay. Or? Let me share my recipe. However, I must say, of course, this is not satisfied by any pet nutritionist. Because um, because I understand, okay, especially if you're talking about dogs, for instance, uh, both cats and dogs, they need a balanced diet, right? So if you were to go through like, oh, all the, especially all the multivitamins and minerals like magnesium, zinc, whatever, you can go a bit like, I went a bit like, oh, this is too much overwhelming. Uh, but and they eat healthier than us. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll, I'll get into that story. <laughs> but uh, for me, what I do for my dogs, okay, because my mama, mama dog is allergic to grain. She, um, actually, she's still allergy. So she's still scratching. So me and my vet are trying to um, determine what she's allergic to. So we're using the whole like single food diet. If you guys know what okay. it is, as in, we're still testing out like uh, beef, okay, kata, lamb, okay, kata, fish, okay. Kata. So we're with her, I'm experimenting. So we're on the lamb phase right now. So I just give a lamb with um, greens. So it's either pak choy or sawi or bayam. Um, and cook that. They're not on a raw diet. Lah. Um, and also for carbs, because uh, also because I cannot afford to give full lamb. Ah, it's so expensive. <laughs> so what I, I do is I add a bit of pumpkin and potato. Uh, sometimes sweet potato, sometimes peas. So that's the veggie and carbohydrate part of it with a bit of lamb so it's um i usually do 50 50 so uh 200 grams of lamb and 200 grams of the carbohydrates with a bit of that but i also add like a pump of omega-6 salmon oil for omega-6 because uh i want to juggle her coat because her coat and skin is the problem so i add a bit of omega-6 oil in there some people say coconut oil is okay but my vet says uh, the efficacy, like effic effectiveness of coconut oil and salmon oil. Coconut oil will take very long to see the effect. Salmon oil will okay. take a shorter time to see the effect, although it's more expensive. Lah. There are also supplements um, like powder that you can buy online. But that's why I say this, like refer to your vet first and say, you know, I'm going to feed these dishes to my cats. Like what should I tamba? You know, what's uh, depleting? What's not enough that I need to buy supplements you know um but okay this is how i see it the easy way to do it is half half then you know uh in the morning you feed them kibbles which is store bought which has full you know like the whole balanced diet mm -hmm. and then maybe at night then you give the homemade food which has what you think is a balanced diet your pumpkin lamb meat whatever whatever, whatever. so even if they're like you know missing like the tiny tiny multivitamins and minerals they're still getting it from the uh, pet store bought food you know in the mm -hmm. in the morning you know it, it, I hope yeah so like you get a balance of both like store bought and homemade stuff yes. so you get like the best of both worlds for that and it's a bit yeah. more convenient as well because in the morning you can just feed them and go to work or whatever yeah. and at night you can slowly take your time to cook yes that's what i do so in the morning i give them kibbles at night i like uh so i prepare my dog food uh if you want some tips is uh, I prepare my dog food in um, a set, like a weekly basis. So I imagine I have two dogs. So that's 14 portions of food uh, every week. And I, and hey, you reuse your, you know, your plastic container. Every, every kitchen in Malaysia should got all these Tupperware, Tupperware plastic containers, so many of them. But I weigh my dog food. So I know even if the container is big, but I know the amount that I put inside. And plastic container, you can freeze it, no issue. So if you open my freezer, I will always have like four portions of, freeze dog food and in my fridge is two portions of the uh, cold one so and i so i don't have to like you know put it in the microwave whatever but instead uh i will rotate lah. so every two days i will take the freezer one put in the fridge and then the fridge one uh, you know an hour before i feed them i put outside you know and room temperature so you you if you if you guys are thinking about doing this you should create a system for yourself and it's actually not that hard um you know maybe during the weekends i spend maybe two hours, two hours making 14 portions of dog food. So if you have only one dog, it should be less than that for you guys. Good luck. Yeah, so um, now I think we can uh, start wrapping it up because we are very close to the one hour mark. Uh, oh, if you have any yeah. questions, yeah, we're like nearly 15 minutes in already. Yeah, oh. so um, if you guys have any more questions, now would be the time to uh, voice out because we are wrapping up soon.
Oh, do pets oh. get tired of eating the same food? Yes. I, I was, <laughs> yes. Very quickly, I said, yes. Especially my dogs. Oh my God. So that's why I uh, mix up the protein. I maintain the same because uh, she is on a strict diet. But that's why I mix up like the pumpkin. Sometimes I switch to sweet potato. Sometimes I switch to, you know, other things. And the greens, if you guys are thinking about doing this, the greens, I chop it up real fine and I cook it together with the lamb so that, you know, the taste isn't like, to you know, manusia also don't like to eat sayur lah. You imagine, that. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but spinach is the best way to go. It's very easy. So spinach or even pak choy. You know the stem. If you're scared, like, wow, the stem so keras, right? You just chop very thinly. When you cook it, it softens, ma. So the dogs mm-hmm. can't tell the difference. They just swallow it up, and it's fantastic for them. But if you guys are, um, if you guys have pets that are not particular, they can switch up the proteins. You know, you can use beef. Uh, but fish, please be careful. Don't put bones. I have to say this. No bones, yeah, for the for the dogs. They, they're not like cats. Even cats are also very dangerous. But chicken is easy to do. Just chicken breast, mince it up. They love that. So yeah, give that a try. Give that a try. Oh, any Kathleen says Kathleen says, any recommendations for dogs with sensitive gut? Yeah, I know. It's a I'm not one to give that suggestion, but um uh I think you still have to refer to your vet for this um but uh pumpkin is apparently very good for digestion and pumpkin is good for weight loss because apparently my dog is fat overweight <laughs> that's why i give because uh, pumpkin has very low calories and apparently it's good for the digestive system as well so so far uh when i've been feeding them pumpkin and the lamb uh, my dog's poop has been fantastic i don't know I, we're getting very deep here but my dog poop is oh look very good <laughs> yeah even when there. you describe it to me i'm like oh that sounds like dinner <laughs> So sometimes right, when oh, I, when I uh, defrost, defrost my dog food for um uh, my dogs, right, then I will bring it, like, my husband will ask, wow, the dog eating five-star dinner, huh? because, like, I feed my husband, you know, I'm, like, a leftover food, but the dog get, like, gourmet dinner like that, like, lamb and pumpkin mashed potato at the side. So, <laughs> yeah, they eat quite well. So, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, if, you, if you're worried about what your dogs are sensitive to, if you're worried about this and that, just go to your vet and ask. I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help you out. And, uh, yeah, if you know a pet nutritionist, lagi better. But, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, also, I think we need to touch about this very quickly, if, uh, if I might add. Um, you know, like dog poop collector. You know, you bring your dogs for walks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of people use the dog bags and, like, pick them up. Yeah, doggy uh, bags. Right, so I'll give you guys. I have never used a doggy bag. Uh, what I have been using is instead. Um, well, I still use a. Wait, I still use a plastic bag, but instead I line them with like cardboard or like thick enough paper, uh, because I always have recycled paper at home. And instead, when I come home, then I just throw away the plastic waste. Uh, the the paper waste and the plastic. I'll just okay. use it. So I don't use like okay. one plastic bag every walk. That's how I. Okay reduce it in my head you know what i mean but what i have also been doing if it's just a short walk around my neighborhood instead i bring a like poop scooper or a spade so whenever yeah, lydia says head, she uses he lydia says she uses a spade spade yeah, yeah. same so i use so a bring spade. a spade yes but it's, sometimes it seems a bit like what are you doing with a spade so i scoop it and yeah you do either throw it in the deep bushes because the only reason you scoop dog poop is you don't want other dogs to smell it and you don't want people to step on it especially right mm-hmm. so i throw it like where people can't get it because dog poop is great fertilizer some people say don't throw it in the long kang. i have i used to throw it in the long kang, but okay. i know some people say like oh you know it's not good for the water wastage and all that but um I think it's still like arguable because the longkang is very dirty and we, there are so many other kinds of waste that goes into the longkang because I don't think my dog poop is the, the least of their worries. But it's up to you guys, uh, whichever you guys are comfortable with. But yeah, use a spade. If you rajin, you kore lobang poop inside, also can. But yeah, if not, the plastic bag thing, I know because sometimes you, maybe sometimes if I bring them to, you know, like a park, you know, I can't bring a spade around instead. So a plastic bag, Usually, it's the, you know, the bread plastic bag. Uh, I will reuse those. But I'll line it with paper. Thick enough paper. So, that I balik rumah, I'll just take out the paper and compost it. So, that's what I've been doing. Wow. Oh, Train all dogs. Um, Cat Van is asking. Wow. Cat Van. Cat Van Mina asks, is there any tips yeah. to train older dogs like 13 years-ish? Uh, to train them? 
I think you have to ask the dog trainer for this. Even my dogs <laughs> are not like properly. Like you mean like train? Yeah. Yeah. Do you mean like what? train to poop and pee in certain areas, or like? Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe. Um, yeah, I think you need an expert for this. Like a proper dog trainer <laughs> would help. Uh, for you to do this, but yeah. So, oh, someone's okay. Asking, uh, is this a? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, pet food, dry food usually comes in comes packaged. So, what can we do with those packages? Mm. I think like I mean, it, it depends on how big the package is. Exactly. That's why I say buy buy big. If you buy <laughs> like you know the three what two kg small one, the bag is so small you can't do anything with it. That's why I love buying yeah. the eighteen kg one. So it becomes the perfect waste. Um, you know, plastic waste. Bag, plastic bag waste. I don't even know what I'm mm -hmm. saying now. You know, to buang sampah. But I understand if you have like small cats and all that, you have to buy small bag. But try lah, try and build, buy the big package better. Uh, I wonder if, not, if like, yeah. Yeah, sorry, you were saying? No, if not, I'm sure there are plenty of ways the, um, the zero waste community in Malaysia are have been creatively, you know, repurposing uh, plastic bags. I think it works the same way, right? Yeah, uh, you can definitely post that question uh, in our Facebook group, Zero Waste Malaysia, and you would have like so many suggestions. But for me, I think maybe if you want to use, uh, if you're using, if you're getting like small bags of uh, packaged food, that plastic can actually, uh, you can bring it for uh, dog walks or whatever, and you can line your paper in there so you can yeah. use that as your plastic for your poop. Smart. And usually they come in quite thick plastic anyway, so it's perfect for you to bring to around reuse. and all that. Yeah, so you don't have to scare that it's like going to tear or whatever, right? Yes, very good. Very good. Yeah. I think I missed the question. Did we miss the okay. question? Yeah. Can we buy in bulk and split with pet yeah. neighbors? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a good idea. If you know neighbors that share the same diet with your cats or whatever, just buy it in bulk and split it with your neighbors. Fantastic. That's a good idea. Oh, and like, um, I think, did we mention this pet treats as well? Uh, you can, I have been buying my pet treats uh, from Newt. Uh, Newt in PJ has got like real good like options to buy it in bulk and to buy it package free. I think the Hive might have as well. There are a few local uh, makers that make really good pet treats. But if you are scared that it might be a bit too pricey for you, because I know the commercial ones, you know, some come really cheap, like so cheap. But if you're really worried, then don't even have to buy treats. I, the way I see it, like just make at home, you know, like if it's for training, for instance, what I do is, you know, chicken breast, you buy chicken breast and then you just tear them in pieces and can use it for training, you know, like because how people need treats to train their dogs, right? So just buy chicken breast and use that as a treat. That is good enough. Or anchovies. Um, my dogs somehow love ikan bilis. So I buy anchovies. Sometimes I don't even... Uh, you can air fry it, toast it, whatever you want to do with it. And that works as a good treat as well. So that's how I've been giving my dogs treats. As long as it's not something that they eat on a daily basis and they love it, I think it would work fine, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, I still haven't found, uh, you know, like chewies, you know, like the hide that they chew, the small, small stick that they chew. I haven't found like a bulk, uh, a package free alternative to that yet. But instead, I buy a lot of like on big plastic bag for them to chew on. But yeah, that's me. Oh. So uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? Did we cover everything? I hope we did, right? Yeah, I think we covered quite a lot. So, yeah. Uh, so I think that's all for today. So just to summarize, uh, try to buy in bulk. Uh, think creatively. If you have any questions, feel free to um, ask, uh, ask us in the Zero Waste Malaysia uh, Facebook yeah, yeah. group or you can always like PM us or you can even follow yeah. and please, yeah, yeah Nadia. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, please follow yeah. Nadia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please follow Nadia on uh, Instagram. And yeah, I think that's all for today. Thank you everyone for joining and tuning in. And thank you Nadia for joining us. Thank you so much for Great. having me and thanks everyone who's, who was watching. You guys uh, asked some great questions there and I love that 
the zero waste community are also animal and pet lovers. So I think those two things go hand in hand, you know, because we love the earth, we love you know the beings that live on it and um, it's just love all around so fantastic it's great that you guys are doing these live sessions zero waste malaysia so keep it up i love whatever you guys are doing so thanks for having me all right thank you so much everyone for joining and thank you nadia happy mother's day everyone if you are a mother day. or yeah happy mother's pet day mommy. everyone <laughs> yes uh, and all the pet mummies yes <laughs> and all your furry babies i'm sure We'll be very happy. Okay, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, tune in next week as we will be having uh, more live streams. Uh, do follow um, Zero Waste Malaysia's Facebook and Instagram to, uh, to be updated on uh, the dates and times and the live streams and such. So thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye.